This is part five of our video series on arrays. And in this lesson, we're looking at parallel arrays. What does parallel mean? For those of you who remember your mathematics, two lines that never meet. For example, one line could be you and your other line could be your crush. Those two lines will never meet. No, I'm just kidding. So parallel lines, two lines that don't meet. How does that apply to arrays? Well, let's take a situation where we've got an array. Let's call it array marks, which goes from one to 100 and it stores a whole bunch of integers. So yeah, we've got the array, it's got a whole bunch of integers, it's only got 10 in the array, but that's fine. So those represent the marks of some people, a mark out of 100 for whatever test they were getting. Let's take another array, let's call it array names. That's also got 100 or spaces or capacity of 100 in that array, um, but it stores strings in this case, it's got a whole bunch of names. Now these could be two very different arrays, but if we say that these arrays are parallel, that means there's a relationship between the two arrays. In other words, the value in, for example, position one of the one array is related to the position one in the other array. So if we look at this example, there you can see 68 in position one of the marks array is the value obtained by the person at position one in the names array, which is Jim. And let's take position seven, for example, that 81 that obtained in position seven of the marks array was obtained by Mel, which is at position seven in the names array. So there's a direct correlation between the values of one array with the values of the other array. So when we have these arrays, the key thing is that although they might have different data types, their capacities need to be the same. So they both go from one to 100. Now we will have a variable called R size. You only need one R size variable to tell you how many values, because if you've only got 10 values in the one array, then obviously there will only be 10 array values in the other array because they are parallel. So we don't need to have a size variable for marks and names separately. We can just have one. One thing to take note of with this array, there's a special rule. What you do to one of the arrays, you must also do to the other array. So always remember that when dealing with parallels, parallel arrays. Whatever you do to one array, you must also do to the other array. Let's see an example of how we do that. Let's say we've got to find the maximum value of an array. So let's say we go through the numbers array, the marks array, and we go find, hey, the max in this array is number 84, and that is at position 4. Now, who obtained that? Well, we found that the position of the max value is at, pos at position 4 in the array marks array but if we take that position four from the array names array we can find out that that person was Lance so by taking the position of the max value from the array marks we were able to find out who obtained that max mark by referring to the exact same position in the names array Let's take a scenario where you were doing a bubble sort. If you're not sure on a bubble sort, go look at our bubble sort videos. But the way it works is it swaps different values around. So let's say the very first time it goes, it goes, hey, we want to swap those two values around because we want to get it in ascending order. So the 68 and the 45 are in the wrong order. So we want to swap them. So we're going to change them around. So the 45, uh, we're going to swap the values. The 45 now goes to position one and the 68 now jumps to position two. But if we just do that to the array marks variable, that's going to it's going to mess up our integrity of our other array. It's not going to be matching with the values that are in the other array. So if we remember that rule, whatever we do to one array, we must do to the other. So because we did a swap in the array marks array, then we need to do the exact same swap in the names array. So that means those two values need to also swap. So Jim and Sarah need to swap around. So we're gonna swap them around. So in that way, even though we swapped Jim's mark to position two, we also swapped Jim's name to position two. So it maintains its integrity. So even though we are swapping values, we can still see that position two still correlates with position two in the other array. Let's see how we apply parallel arrays to a Delphi example. So yeah, we're going to carry on with our little example here. We're going to be dealing with the names array, which has a whole bunch of names in it, and the marks array. Now those two are parallel arrays. So if we look there, array names, Jim obtained a mark of 68. 
So it's, there we go. So those are the two arrays that we're dealing with. Okay, so if I want to find the lowest value in the array and who it was, then we will do our min aggregate function where we set min to a very, very high number. We loop from one till the size of the array, which is the size of both arrays, secondly, and we find the min value in array marks. Check the value in array marks. If it's smaller than my min value, then it is a new min value. That is a new lowest value. We record it and we record its position. So that doesn't look like anything different to what we've done. But the difference is here, when we display the answer, we display the min mark, but we go and fetch whatever position we recorded but in the, the minimum algorithm, we go fetch that exact same position in the names array, even though we're working with marks here. Here we go fetch the value in the names array and display its corresponding position in the names array. So if we look at the, the data, the lowest mark there, I think, is the 45, and the name is Sarah. Let's just double check that is the lowest mark. Eh? Yeah, it looks like the lowest mark. So if we're finding the lowest, it's going to find that 45 at position 2, and then go to array names, fetch position 2 in array names, and hopefully display Sarah's name. Find the lowest. Lowest mark is 45 by Sarah. So there we go. It fetched the same position that it found in array marks. It found displayed the same position in array names. Now let's look at this one. We're going to sort. We're going to do a, a little sort here. This is a selection sort where we sort the arrays, uh, sort the marks array. So let's just see what it does. We're going to run it. And we can see the marks array. Do you see that it's there? And we see the name. So Jim, let's just remember Jim got 68 and pick a random one, Mel got 81, 68 and 81, remember that. So now we're going to sort the array, sort the marks array. So the marks array is sorted. So if I display the marks array now, do you see it's sorted in descending order from 84 to 45? Okay, but now if I display the names, there's a problem because Mel is at position seven. And if you remember, Mel didn't get 60, Mel got 81. So now our array is out of sync. We made changes to one array and not the other array. So when we are doing the sort, for example, we will sort on the one criteria. And whenever we do a swap, we must do the exact same swap. Word for word, we're going to do the exact same swap. We're going to do that on the, on the names array. But the difference there is this is an array of strings. So I'm going to have a stemp variable of type string. So make an stemp. I'll type string and we're going to say if that is equal to array names so whatever change we did to array names so store array names i in temp then we're going to do the exact same swap so wherever you see the word array marks we just gonna say array names it uses the same i and j so that it keeps it in sync with what changes it's making with the marks, so there we go. So we whatever change we did to marks, we did the exact same change to the names array. So let's run it now. Oh, what are the errors? Ah, not R temp, it must be S temp. There we go. So it's compiling. Let's just double check again. So there we go, Mel at position seven, got 81. And we want to look at Jim, Jim got 68. So Mel got 81, Jim got 68, remember that. So now we sort it, marks are sorted. So there we go. So let's look, 81 is at position two, Mel is at position two. And uh, Jim is at position five, we'll go to marks ray, position five, 68. So it maintained the integrity. Whatever changes it did to the one array, it also did to the other array. And that's how you deal with parallel arrays. For more videos in this video series, as well as other videos on RT and Delphi-related content, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, give us a like. We'd love to hear from you. Give us some feedback. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.